Thanks, Jeff. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> oh, sweet. Maybe I can do gallery view just to start the show. <laughs> oh, there's Pablo and Melissa, Susan, Troy, Julie, Frank, Spirit TV, Heidi. John. Oh, wow, this is great. Normally we do this at the end, but Sharon <laughs> driving a car. <laughs> Bridget. Well, yeah, this is kind of the, an end of a season, actually. This is the last show for the end of the year, and we're going to be taking a two-week break from regular studio activities um, to retool. I'm actually going to give you a little tour of the studio because, yeah, we've got this brand new studio outside that's being built and it's going to be finished in a couple of days. So the morning shows are going to be on hold until the 14th. And this is my last from the bottom up show for this season and for the next few weeks. And at this time, I'm now going to be moving to Saturday, starting Saturday. I think it's the 12th. And we're going to be in the new studio with a live studio audience and we're only going to be on Spiri.ai, the website, because here there's restrictions with clips, and I like to do magic show clips and comedy and, I don't know, hopefully keep the deep presence while sharing it in a way that, yeah, just keeps bringing in a new crowd and having, having fun. So I have, I have a lot of big ideas, but they don't always manifest, like maybe having Jim Carrey on or something like that. <laughs> But we've been thinking like that for years. So whatever the spirit wants to do, we know we're just going to have fun and be interactive and in the moment. We don't really script too much, but that's another part of the new shows that are coming in, coming off of Sunday is we really want just like a new, new higher quality, you know, better cameras, cameras that rotate through the room. And I'll show you in a sec, but we kind of have limited space here for spontaneous guests. So, well, maybe I could even, I could give you a behind the scenes look at, oh, because this is, this is the end of an era. This is the last you're ever going to see these shows from the studio because it's about to be dismantled. So I thought I could give you a little pre-New Year's celebration of what it is we have going on. So... Can everybody see what I'm showing? Okay. So you see, this is what I look at. This is what all of us are in the studio. We see you on your faces. See, there's Mary. Mary, wave for us and see if we can see you. Double wave. There we go. You see Jeff up there? I see Jeff. This is Jeff. Look at that. And so we have these really expensive cameras. This is why we needed these patron donations. They're like $10,000 cameras each. And we have three of them. So we always have to remember which camera to look at. So with the new studio, we're going to have a system that's going to have like little red lights or something. So we can improve our where we're supposed to look and spread it out so we get different angles. There's our sound booth where people go in and do recordings for books. It's a little packed with things right now because nobody's recording books. This is the light. This is how we get the nice soft light on the chair <laughs> and our faces. And this set is constantly evolving. See, there's for guests. Look how tiny it is. We have a green screen, green screen beyond there and all these lights on these racks. But we can't really use it. So I'm going to show you the studio. People, look, look what it looks like. See how temp that's why it's so tempting for them to talk to me. They're, <laughs> they're right behind the TV. So every time I forget something, they're ready to help me with what it is I've forgotten. But then I'm looking at them and not you guys. So the new studio is going to resolve that because they're going to be behind a glass wall. So they can't speak, even if they 
even if they wanted to. This is their last chance. <laughs> this is their last chance <laughs> to speak. <laughs> We're going to have somebody in the studio with me helping communicate. And whoever's in there. Look, there's Zach in the back corner. From Heidi to everyone, beautiful. Look at this. Look at this mixer. This is Jeffrey's halftime job. He's moving all of those buttons all the time while he's helping supervise Nicholas and Zach. But well, what's that machine do there, Nicholas? This is a switcher, so I can go from this close up shot to you to our other set of shot for two people. I have a laptop view, so if I move anything from there over there. Whoa. So that then people that. can see them and check out our yeah. cords. Yeah, okay, these backup cords. It's the only thing we can handle everything except the power going in. <laughs> <laughs> then we just pray. <laughs> just pray for a miracle. Look at all these screens. Look at Zach's. <laughs> <laughs> these are his monitors. So, Zach, you're yeah. new. You're new to the studio team. What? Uh, the other day you shared. Uh, at our Christmas celebration, you shared that you were so grateful for something, but I missed it. I wasn't there mm -hmm. to hear. And maybe you could share with us why. What? Why? You know, you've had a good job. You were a school music teacher. You came here, and now you're you're doing this. Never probably thought you'd be doing that. Why? Yeah. Why are you grateful? Yeah, I just really feel. Um, there's like a deeper purpose underneath everything we do here. And it's like the more that I immerse, like pour myself into what I'm doing here, the more I can actually feel connected, not in like the specifics of what I'm doing. Like when I started, there was some resistance I had around like spending a lot of time in here, like alone. But I think the more I do it, the more the shared like goal keeps me connected with everyone, not necessarily in the form, but just in like a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling of like putting this first. Mm -hmm. And I find that I can't necessarily trust anything specifically, but this this shared purpose is what mm -hmm. I can trust and it's what I feel so you... lifts me up out of this darkness faster and faster. You cry, you know, you cry a lot, right? Like yes. around us. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, if someone says, how are you doing? You take it quite literally and just beautiful. You're like, well, and your eyes just start watering up. And <laughs> people have to be ready to hear how you're doing. Did that happen to you in your last job? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I have to say I probably couldn't have survived like another another week let alone another year mm. like yeah it's just it's feeling harder and harder to to put on like the face of innocence basically mm. like i can't mm. i can't do that so here you can just cry right yeah <laughs> that's beautiful and do you have um like you you know you came in and we um we just said, okay, Zach, you can help design our, our artificial intelligence system for the bot. And uh, we just kind of gave you full access. And it was like, whoa, that's overwhelming to be leading this major project. So we switched you. We said, well, why don't you work with Laverne on the bot and really take direction from her? Join the studio team and take direction from Jeffrey and, and Nicholas. But here in the studio, you'd say Nicholas is probably the one that you take the most direction from. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's it's kind of a pretty even split. How do you like um, taking direction? I think it's it's always just an opportunity. Like I can look at where I think I know what the best way of doing it mm -hmm. is, and it's it's like one of those moments where I can practice. Like it doesn't matter if your brother is wrong or right; mm -hmm. he's right because of what he is. Mm -hmm. And actually, in my case, it's even better almost in that I, I know I was coming at the, the AI project and taking that 
like oversight role. I, I feel like it was more from like a personal perspective. Like, mm-hmm. what do I want to do mm-hmm. to get this project out of the ground rather than like what actually is most helpful? Mm-hmm. So like the first step there is to see like, I don't actually know what's right. most helpful and Nicholas can help me see that by telling me to do things I wouldn't normally do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Zach. Thank you. Maybe we can use this opportunity to ask, <laughs> ask Nicholas, what's your core lesson that you practice working in the studio <laughs> with? Well, I would say studio and everything in general, it would be uh, direct communication. Just learning to really, um, actually there's something you shared with me yesterday that just actually helped clarify it more where it was about just really feeling like I'm in alignment that everything I say or do is just, is really just, is direct that I'm not hiding behind like a double question <laughs> that I'm not asking about something, but really saying something underneath, underneath that. And it's just been getting more and more revealed to me where it is. I do that, where I'm not allowing myself to just be really authentic mm-hmm. and, and speak to it as I feel like in the moment, whether I feel inspired by something, whether I feel like I feel hurt by something someone said or angry or, you know, just just really being there and not trying to be like the good guy, mm. a concept that I've grown mm. up with. Because you said when you were with your parents that you, you know, you saw early on that if you expressed emotion, you would get you get hit, like either physically or emotionally, just like stop that. And so now you're working through giving yourself permission to be authentic with what you're feeling. It can take the form of being direct here about what you feel is helpful for the studio, and then within a relationship mm. it can be helpful like i don't know if you want to share a specific example even from last night i heard you tried something new <laughs> <laughs> well yeah I, <laughs> well i know last night there ended up being uh this trigger or something for me where uh yuta who I'm in relationship with uh had shared just very briefly like oh you and Susanna are like this and I don't know she was just saying something blatant and I, and I could feel this little like hmm and I ended up going to her and just asking like well what did you mean by this but that was like this double question that I couldn't actually see in the moment until you know further exploration that actually what what I really wanted to say is I feel hurt that I feel associated or looked down upon or unequal or you know that's actually what was going on and I'm just kind of learning to see where I do that. <laughs> and so then... Uh, and you wanted to um, you wanted to <laughs> extend some affection. Every yes, I've, I've, I've been wanting to give you a kiss for <laughs> almost four months now. <laughs> I didn't know I'd say that on it. <laughs> and I don't know, just after <laughs> further exploration of just sharing all the thoughts last night, I, I just felt like, oh yeah what was I kind of waiting for? And I just really felt all the love and, and it just felt right to me and willing to like take the hit of maybe for not feeling the same way and end up kissing her. It was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> we smile because we celebrate every, Nicholas is practicing direct communication, but you would ask, can I kiss you? And she'd be like, in that moment, what do I do with that answer? And I still maybe just, Go for it. And so he did it last night and it worked really well. So. <laughs> it, was, it was beautiful just to see like, oh, because I didn't realize that that was actually part of my lesson. Like that that was another area where it was like this double question, like where really it's just like following that, that kind of direct communication and just actually going for it. <laughs> Thank you, Nicholas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well. We'll move on to our next thing. I thought we feel ready to go outside. Sure. This is the old studio, as we said. These are the people that are working behind it. And as you can see, it's all for the healing. Without that, it's just it's no different than anything else. So I'm going to put my shoes on here. And we're going to take you out and show you the space that that uh, we're going to move to the new studio. Might we need a little bit of time? So here we go. We don't have far to go. Come out this door. 
See, here it is. This is a brand new building. This is Camus, the main house over here. And this has just been added. You can see all that snow. It's a new roof where we just walk out and right there is going to be a, a red light so people will know that what? When we're recording. When we're recording. When we're live so people don't rush in. You can escape that way too. Oh, the heat's even out. Look at this. This is the new control room where we're going to have a series of computers and they can look through this window here. I don't know if you can see through it. There you go. You can see there's another room right through that window. So they can control all the... This is bigger than our old studio altogether. This one room yeah. is bigger than our old studio. There's heater in there, light, ethernet cable coming in. And here's the actual studio now. Maybe you should open that door over there. This is just to let some light into the room. Look at this. What are we going to have up there, Jeffrey, on the roof? We're going to have racks of light. So we're going to have a huge aluminum rack on the ceiling that supports all our lighting to keep <coughs> the floor space open for our cameras and our in-studio guests for the new From the Bottom Up on Saturday night at <laughs> 6 o'clock. Jeffrey, like, it's like going to be like Saturday night live, he says, but we'll see. So, so this has been your baby. Why, uh, why were you inspired to do this? Oh, well, if you watched my last show, <laughs> this is the answer to my prayer. Because we had, yeah, when we had this, this community meeting down in Mexico where we were all brought together and David was sharing, it's time for us to extend. And the shows were what was given for us to extend in our different ways. Mine, as you know, is through 12 steps to a life of full devotion. Each one of us had these opportunities. And we built a studio that the QDS is there in now, which has been rapidly expanding and upgrading. And then, yeah, the idea was to continue to, yeah, expand and make it a more accessible and bigger space. And then when I got here, we started, you probably remember seeing a couple of shows at the kitchen table. <laughs> and we said, no, we need a dedicated space. So we've been operating out of that small room. But as our minds expand, so does our studio. <laughs> yeah, Jeffrey's always had, he's always had, um, before he came here, all these super big inspirations like developing film. Actually, you have a film production company, Shadow Films. And people were always, one, they always wanted to be part of big projects with him, but he just couldn't do it. It just felt like there was something in his heart that couldn't launch. Now it's, I feel like everything that he's ever won is being given and his resources are just going towards these cool things that we get to share with all of you. That's what's so cool about all of this is we get to share it all. Like this would be nothing if, if there was no sharing and it's just a studio. Yeah, so what is it for? What is it for? It's for sharing. Okay, well, we'll walk back to our, our tiny studio for now. Wait, one last look. <laughs> Can see me here? Okay, good. Well, that's that's a little tour of what of what's coming and why we need the two weeks to just kind of take a break. And of course, we're going to have our online retreat next weekend. I'll be a big part of that with David, and I think Kristen's going to join us, and lots of music. So, and then that whole next five six days, we're just going to be flipping everything in there and, and getting it ready. So, barring some unforeseen circumstance, that's that's what'll happen. So just wanted to clearly communicate, no more morning shows for two weeks. And um, next week's the online retreat. And then after that, we'll start our new, our new schedule. Check it all out though on spirit.ai because our, all the information will be there. So,
yeah, I think I've actually covered everything. Sent David a text, but so yeah, this is I guess our last uh, New Year's last show of the year, and maybe I can just open it up. I knew it was going to be shorter because we have um, 21 people arriving. There are people have left right now from our studio team to go pick them up at the airport for our silent three week silent retreat. So I'm going to leave in an hour and go pick them up in Heber at uh, Walgreens and drive them up to show them the monastery and the Highlander has a glass roof. So the four people that get to be in my vehicle will get to do this canyon run where they get to see all the beautiful rocks on top of them as if they're in like a, a glass ball. So I'm excited to do that. But uh, yeah, maybe I can just open it up. Does this, anybody have anything they want to share or express before I yeah, end the last episode? Oh, there's Deb and John. Heidi, just raise your hand. hand. Go ahead, Go ahead Heidi. Heidi. I just want to, can you hear me? <clears throat> Good yes. morning. I just want to tell you guys, thank you. Um, I, I feel that, you know, and I speak for all of us when I say, I feel it's all for me. And I just have been feeling the excitement of the spirit rushing through everything. There's a lot on the horizon for, <clears throat> for any who has said yes to the spirit. I just feel a big movement. Um, grateful for your guys' transparency and keeping us connected. Um, we do feel like your family. We feel like we're family because you guys keep us connected. And we've got little, little, um, like satellites of family all over the world because of you. And, and the spirit is opening us up wide open. We're all saying yes. And I am so grateful to have this reflection of my own mind that you guys are all saying yes with me. And you're, we're all joining in this way. I'm just excited. And I, I, I feel like I'm kind of stuck in one place. But at the same time, my mind is everywhere. Just like God's is. It's just everywhere. Um, the body seems to be in one place. But the mind isn't. And thank you. I look forward to your shows every morning. I look forward to Jeffrey's every morning. When I can't get in, that's my forgiveness lesson, because sometimes I can't get in. Um, I'm just grateful for being connected, and Spirit hears us in a big way. And this is, this is a, the yes I said yes to, and all of us said yes to, and I just feel the Spirit moving in a glorious way. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. That's beautiful, yeah. I'm um, thinking of... That line, the world has not yet experienced a comprehensive awakening. You know, Andy wrote that on our Spiri, uh, somewhere he wrote it. Oh, maybe on our YouTube page, which we just launched today, the new Spiri TV page. And I feel like that's, yeah, that's somehow that just really touches me right now. That's what we're doing. And when you say that, like we're all saying yes together and we're all, we're all waking up together. That somehow that is the only way because if Jesus says you you will not you cannot leave one slave behind then that that undoes the idea that I myself I'm going to get so happy and wake up and then disappear while everybody else is left to suffer <laughs> no it's it's more like everybody has to come with me so if there's one brother that I perceive is struggling then there's some work to do in my mind and we yeah we take everybody so so thank you for that and i actually yeah i've just i had written david just before the show he, he this is a surprise because he didn't know and i didn't know but um i think he's here on zoom so i just thought we could bring him on and he could just if there's any message he <laughs> he wants to share as at the end of the year there he is. Hi, David. He can do that. So. 
Uh, it's been such a joy watching it all and and uh, watching some of the shows today and uh, yeah Heidi said it well you know we are we are really all connected and it doesn't really matter where the the bodies are and then what you just said is really the, the core of it that that we don't go home alone that uh, everybody goes with us and I know Andrije Andy was uh, talking about that idea recently too where we all wake up together. And it is really in one instant. We all wake up in in a holy instant of light. That's what the wake up is. It's not like a lot of people feel that there were ascended masters in the past. And when they ascended, they went back to God and the rest of, of humanity is just stuck asleep. But Jesus says in A Course in Miracles, when I awoke, you were with me. So it's like, how willing are you to accept what Jesus said? When I awoke, you were with me. Because that's really the only question it comes down to. How willing am I to accept the resurrection, the correction completely? And this is a beautiful year-end broadcast. And I know the, the idea has come up a number of times uh, on Ricky's show and a number of uh, broadcasts you know make this year different by making it all the same so so this is our year of celebration this is our year of of joy of happiness and our year of of embracing uh, fully our christ self and letting go of every other concept or idea in our mind and i'm excited it looks like uh when we have the bottom up premiering there on uh, January 12th, you know, in the new studio, that'll be a fun experience for everybody too, because I, I understand, Jason, you want, you're going to have a live audience in there, so uh, that'll liven the place up too. You got you have a global digital audience and a live audience, uh, and there's nothing like live TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward. I'll just be really intimate with the group and just share that with the whole world. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's the intimacy. That's, that's the true intimacy where you have nothing to hide. You know, there's a part in the Course, sometimes people watch our shows and listen to our teachings um, and, and says, Do, does Jesus even mention uh, private thoughts? But he mentions private thoughts in the, uh, in the workbook. And he also, in the early part of the workbook, he also mentions it in the talking about the Holy Instant. But if you would have... No thoughts that you would keep to yourself alone. That's what a private thought is. If you would have no thoughts that you would keep to yourself alone, then you will realize you are one with everything. Uh, because it's only the belief that private thoughts can be shared that generates this artificial projected world. So it's really only one lesson is, is so being so relaxed about your thoughts and so... Uh, free and open that you don't have to hide and protect them. You just have to notice them and, and remember, that's not me. Those thoughts aren't me. They never were me. And then you get a purification to the point where you, you realize that only love is real and only love can be shared and only the thoughts of God can be shared. But ego thoughts are not real, so they're not capable of being shared or extended. So that's that's a key idea. So we're all going into this together to, to have that experience. And yeah, I'm just so grateful. We're grateful for it all. Mm. Mm. It looks so bright and shiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in my own little studio here. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's cool. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you, I guess. Does anyone else have their hands up, Jeff, or is that, is that it? No, at the moment, that's it, but let me have a quick look around. Oh, there's Jan and Holland and Esther. Oh, there's, oh, it looks like Heidi, or Heidi, it looks like Esther's waving her hand. Yeah, they're all waving because I said wave. So. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Okay, well, 
If, anything else, David? I think I'll just say Merry Christmas to everyone. Here. <laughs> Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Yeah. It allows me to eat lunch before I head up to the monastery. <laughs> Very good. That's good. That's important. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thanks for coming on, David. And we, this is our cake. This is our, like, um, that we, can, we consider the digital studio work our cake, and we have all these muffins, like Silent Retreat, and all this stuff that's going to keep happening, but we're going to keep pouring our heart and energy into this so we can share the love. So yeah. we'll see you in the new year. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, we can have our studio come here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> these guys weren't ready for these questions this morning. Well, they really were, but they're like, <laughs> no one's here to shut us up. It's yeah. be, <laughs> be on forever. We are spotlight. Yeah. No one's here to pull the plug. <laughs> Troy, Troy's our our TV guy. What do we do? How do we pull the plug here, Troy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See you, everybody, next year. Okay. Bye bye. <laughs>